Well, I was the Boyne Hunters. I started in Boyne Hunters in 51, I think. 51 or 50, yeah, 51 I started to work in the Boyne Hunters. And I worked there until 1964. I never missed a day's work and never was late but once. But that was, you know, then. All, uh, see, that that mill burnt three or four times pretty near completely. And we put it out three see different times, or twice, before it did burn, finally. You did put it out twice? Oh, twice. We had, it was a fire twice before that, and we put it out and saved it before it did burn. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the only reason it burnt that night was because we couldn't stay in there. We didn't have smoke masks then. And when we had departments from Bradford and from Barrie and from Woodsville, of course it was in the wintertime, in November, it was in deer season. <coughs> Around Thanksgiving, I remember it, somewhere in there. And when they, time they got here, all their equipment was froze up, so we was the only outfit pumping water. They couldn't pump water. And when, of course, Uncle Harry's barn was right there within, I, I, it, I'll say 50 feet of the mill. And so I was chief then, it doesn't matter anyway. And Lloyd Sweet's house is where it is now, that white one on the right, across the, and of course Jackman's mill in, in Longo's house, that was all right there. So we knew we couldn't do anything. I knew we couldn't save the building. There was no way because it was completely full of dry lump bobbin, see? Yeah. There were just crates and crates and crates, and I, I, there was an overpass across the road one, of course, okay, yeah. and it got a, it went into the, into the elevator shaft, mm -hmm. and Robert Sweet and I went in, and we had it all knocked down once, but we could just could not stay in there because we didn't have no smoke mask or nothing. And you were the fire chief too. I was then yeah. at that yeah. time. Yeah, I was for. Seventeen and a half years. Yeah. Of it doesn't matter. And uh, so, it, so it just just got away from us. And once it went up that shaft, it went right straight through the roof, and it just blowed the hole right through the roof in that elevator shaft. And the car, I went in there. We went in, and and it was years and years of dust all over the girts and everywhere. Of just not, it just seems gunpowder. And I know when it broke through the door. There was doors that opened up into the shaft. It was the elevator shaft. And when that broke through that door, it was it, 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 just a blue flame went all over those girts, all the way around the building. Well, oh. what what I'm calling the girt is a beam, you know, mm -hmm. with dust up, okay. And, and after that, it was just the same as you lit the whole damn thing all at once. And there was no way and of course, I knew I couldn't save it. We couldn't save it on the cost of the all of the office was where Peggy Pearson's flower shop is there. That was part of that was the downstairs part. That was the finishing room, of course, in, of the small bobbins. And of course, as I say, there was three stories <clears throat> in that room. It was piled full of dry kill bobbins. In there's no way to get, and, and the sprinkler system didn't work for but a few minutes. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Because the water had frozen. No, well, because there was no water in the in the system. It was up on top. Oh. See, we, it, it, there was only, it was, it held 30, 39, 38 or 39 gallons of water. And of course it leaked. And it was the job we had to pump downstairs. We took the water out of the hedgehog and pumped it back up there. Well, they hadn't filled it up maybe for a couple of days. You know, you just didn't do it every day. Nothing ever happened, so whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Anyway, if, it, if the sprinkler system had worked, it would have put the fire out because it was in back of these bobbins and boxes where we couldn't get to it. Doesn't matter. But the machine shop was on the other side of the road on the right hand side going up and they had of course they made all their equipment there. They made everything that they needed. And uh, but we'll, and we told them if they wanted anything in there that they better get it because we couldn't knew we couldn't hold it. We was all alone. It's a say 
the other fire departments were there, but they weren't pumping no water. Of course, there was all kinds of water because in back of Longo's and Jackman's, there was a pond right there, Jackman's Dam. We had all kinds of water, but couldn't get it. Didn't matter. So I told the boys, I said, we decided we'd put all the hoses right on Uncle Harry's barn, garage, and on Lloyd Sweet's house, and on Jackman's. We had uh, one tank truck then, and one pumper, and that's all we had for equipment. And finally, I can't remember which was it was anyway, they got their truck started, their pump started, and they protected Jackman's on the other side, and Longo's house. And those two never got a fire. And Harry, Mac, Harry Berry's garage, it was all asbestos shingles on it. And all it did was just blister them. We kept that. It, it never burnt them houses. It, got, it never got out of that vicinity. And I don't know really how we, how we kept it there. But that garage <coughs> is gone now. Oh, well, yeah, the, the garage, garage is, is gone now. But the garage is where the temperatures are now. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, and that never, that, that never got burnt a mite. That one never did. Yeah. And Longo did it, and the Lord Sweet's house didn't. <coughs> and as I say, Uncle Harry's garage is right there. And, and we all I did was blistered the shingles on it, but it never got a fire because we just had the hoses on it and kept them there because you couldn't do nothing else. Yeah. And then when that, the whole side of that building on the left, as I say, was up three stories. And when that fell into the road, of course the roof burnt off and there was nothing holding that wall up. And all the bobbin boxes in there was piled high with tons and tons of bobbin. That fell right across the main road, right over against the machine shop on the other side. And there was nothing you could do about it. There was no way of stopping it. So. So you've mentioned a number of times, Neil, um, how much things have changed in town. Is, do you think that the fire, the final fire, the fire that yeah. Completely destroyed it. Was the yeah. beginning of that change? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, as I say, there were 65 people I know worked there, and they came from Cookville, West Thompson, some from Bradford, and, and, and everywhere, okay? <coughs> Newberry and all over. And when you take 65 jobs out of a town, it pretty near kills it. Mm -hmm. The only time, the only traffic you saw here was when they came to work in the morning and when they went home at 4 o'clock. 